once again, Psalm 132, it was a Davidic Psalm. You know, there's something about that name. That name is our Lord Jesus Christ. And David, and the Psalm starts out here this morning. And I pray that you have ears to hear some of this. And if you're having a relationship with our Lord and Savior and you're talking to him every day like you're supposed to be doing, remember something. It's a sin to make an oath with God and then not do it. So many times when I say things to the Lord and he comes through for me, the very first thing I do is if I had an oath there and said, Lord, I'll, I'll begin to do this. I'll do that. Uh, I'll represent you whatever way I got it, Father, just help me out. And I've always gotten answered prayer, even to the point of just the simplicity of God's word, where nothing will be impossible to you. Just follow the word of God. My biggest prayer for everybody here, and, and I know there's God's adding people to this group. We were talking about it yesterday. Another brother said, There'll be a day when there's 30 or 40 in the prayer group. It, God's the one. I'm not building no ministry here. I'm just obeying God myself because I'm a needy person. I got more needs probably than most of the people here. But I have the rock of my salvation. My, the spirit of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, he inhabits the praise of his people. And, and if you start worshiping God every day, It'll take the enemy out of your brain because you'll draw close to God and he'll draw close to you. And then you can appropriate the word of God by just believing it in simple childlike faith because there was a promise here, a promise that God gave David and David became a king. And in doing so, he thought he was going to... Uh, rebuild the temple but David didn't it was his son Solomon and 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 going on and going on you heard the teaching Adam was teaching last week and we were going on about the different things that go on in the line and then you go back further in numbers you go to you read Samuel second Samuel you start to see that there's a a, a, a silver thread in scripture that backs up the word of God from the old testament to the new and that's why I love this psalm okay let me go back here and start again because I'm I, I drifted in preaching I don't want to do that I can preach after I read it the Lord remembered David and all his afflictions what David went through to become a servant of God how he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up unto my bed. Verse four, I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to mine eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. He was being driven. That's pretty obvious. Lo, we heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in all the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. You talk about battling, I battle sometimes, and then I, I give it up to the fact that maybe God's given me a nudge sometimes because I, I don't have to go to work anymore. I need to pray for people, you know, and when you hear people in a prayer group being bothered, being tormented, or people's needs, you begin, and it could be any need. I, I had a brother call me yesterday. And immediately I started praying for him through the afternoon, you know, and then in the nighttime, sometimes when I wake up and I've already had maybe four or five hours sleep 
And, and the very first thing I, I look up, I lift my hands while I'm in bed and I ask God to show me. And he does. He brings things from my heart to my mind. Remember what this person said to you? Remember, that's what the secret place is all about. Interceding for other people. I can't tell you how much closer any one of us can get to God if we would just imitate why Christ went to the cross, why he shed the blood for everyone's sins. And it, it sort of puts you in a place where you, you give up your life to serve the one who gives life. You know, when I looked at that verse seven this morning, I had nine highlighted, but I really got touched by seven. We will go into his tabernacles. Why? Because we're supposed to be the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. As imperfect as we are at the cross, he bought us. He made us his own. Why would God take a sin? That's how much it, it perpetrates my little brain sometimes. Because when you look at the sinner, you get upset. What do sinners do? They persecute. They afflict. What does God say? Forgive them. Sometimes it's hard to be a Christian. And to put up with the, the different things that are operating because the person that you're trying to put up with is not reading the word of God. And yet in the psalm, he says, O rise, O Lord, unto thy rest. Thou art the art of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness and let thy saints shout for joy. That's what we are. We're that part right now in this word. David was crying out. They, the, the psalm was singing out probably. This was like the longest one. Remember, we've been reading these short psalms. They were like five yesterday, three verses, some days five, six, seven, whatever it was. It was part of that part of the book of Psalms that we're getting fed truth in just a few verses today's verses go 18 so there's a little more but the spiritual teaching it all ends up at the cross it all ends up with jesus christ let thy priests be clothed with righteousness jesus became our righteousness jesus is the messiah jesus there's no peace until Jesus returns, people. That means we're going to be battling evil spirits and, and get used to the battleground. That Christ did it all at the cross. If you would take the cross as your victory. And when he resurrected, that's your life and my life that we're with him. He seals us. He puts his Holy Spirit in us. And he says, and, and when we go into the kingdom of God, he stands there and he looks at the father and said, he's mine, she's mine. Because we don't have that righteousness unless it's been given to us. And it's only given to us because he's the creator. It's not because... We're doing all these wonderful works because here, I just read you a testimony of someone I really didn't know that I looked at my phone and it rang and I, I didn't know them because they weren't in my phone. All I did was say, Lord, should I answer this call? It's called a divine appointment when you're getting up every day to serve the Lord. How many divine appointments do we miss? I miss a lot of them sometimes. And then I go back over the years and I look at all the different things God has done in my life. The same way he promised David here. 
that God would never leave or forsake the family line. You know, the more I read the Bible, the more I study this stuff, the more I proclaim it. Even, even in this rote prayer, when we put in there about our family lines, the strong men that are operating in us, our families, our children, our grandchildren, our homes. And then you look at your neighbor. As my sister was saying today, and it's obvious, like Ernie said, they're not saved. That's the whole purpose of praying and being a house of prayer, that God's kingdom would increase and Satan's kingdom would decrease. And sometimes you got to get real and talk back to the devil and use the word of God because the word of God does not return void. And sometimes you got to let that seed, it's not money, it's the word of God, go into a person, regardless of how they get it, whether it's a track or handing someone a Bible or just saying, God bless you, or I love you. Let me pray for you. You know, when my neighbor apologized to me years later, he became a great neighbor. I still pray for him and his wife for their salvation. They moved away, and, and I'm believing God's going to answer that prayer. Because the word of God doesn't return void when you represent God anywhere, anytime, any place. And when we look at verse 10 today in the read, he says, for thy servant, replace David's sake with your sake and my sake. Because we're servants of the Most High God. It said, for David's sake, turn not the face of thine anointed. The Lord had sworn in truth unto David. In other words, the word of God don't lie. You just embrace God for who he is. Start to get your will out of the way and surrender to God's will, and you'll start to walk in the spirit. You ask God to show you things, he will begin to teach you because he rewards those that diligently seek him. He didn't allow David to build the temple, but he allowed Solomon, his son, to do that. Well, today, we're in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, even in his name, can have life. Because faith is something, it's a belief. And if you believe God sealed you, you're sealed. Nobody's going to take you away from something you believe. That's why you love not your life unto death. You're not going to sit there and try to kill people because everybody's going to go to the first death. Regardless of what you think, eternal life comes when you close your eyes and then you're in his presence. That's why I always like playing songs to remind everybody of our destiny. Why? Because the Lord had sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn away from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children, now listen to what it says here. I, I can't remember when I highlighted this because I've highlighted many Bibles in my life. If thy children will keep my covenant, the covenant is an agreement. So we have to come into agreement with the word of God because it was the word that became flesh. Everybody says, oh, they run the prophets, they run the prophetess for, oh, give me a word from the Lord, and they don't read their Bibles. At our little fellowship, we try to teach people that the 66 books will teach you just about everything you need to know about the heart and mindset of God. And here, my testimonies, they're not our testimonies, there is testimonies that I shall teach them. 
their children also will sit upon the throne forevermore. Wow. Just receive what God says as truth in the word of God. Sometimes people get so upset with people. And I found it out when we prayed with that woman that sent me the testimony. That it was the grace of God through deliverance. Not my, my testimony, her testimony. She's free. And she was so excited about running into somebody that just preaches the word of God. So what does that tell all of us? Preach the word of God. Do the word of God. A work man or a work woman. My wife was ministering to me this morning through the book. Written by a sister, Jesse Penn Lewis. And it pointed to Romans 6, but it really pointed to Romans 7 very strongly. So, you know, when people start going astray and they're, they're out of order in their order or their brain, go to the scriptures and read. That's where you're going to get comforted the most. You know, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. I mean, a simple little thing that the world talks about, it's the word of God that comforts us. Why? Because in the end, we went for the Lord had chosen Zion. He had desired it for his habitation. That's his dwelling place. And how many of us got any excuse when you think about the word of God? He says, whenever two or more gather, I'm in their midst. I'm there. There's no excuse not to call on God at any time. There's no excuse to pick up a phone and call someone and say, hey, I need prayer. I pray for people in and out whenever God needs me to pray for someone. And it's just like the sister last night that sent me texts. She said, Pastor, I'm praying for you. And I said, thank you. I said, you know, sometimes I get out of the box. Sometimes you sit here and I try to explain why I started the prayer group. And people are just all over the map with it. They, it's just a discipline to have a relationship with God. It's all this prayer group and it's producing fruit. Many different people over the years have come through here, and there's quite a few of them that got their own little groups, and they're, they're praising God. They're not in legalism or anything else. They're just seeking God and getting up every day to serve God because they're reading the instruction book. It's the same for all of us. He says, this is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. That's why God never leaves us or forsake us. He gives us the opportunity to call upon him. You know, you could talk all day long about this problem, that problem. But bring it to God in prayer. Believe the word of God is truth. And your life will begin to change when you start reading the book and start doing what God says to do in our lives. And every time you mess up, he's still going to forgive you. He wants that relationship, you know? I just love to hear the simplicity of some of the people when they pray. And everybody should, should have a prayer request because everybody here has plenty of people in their lives that are not saved, period, you know? Instead of enjoying the world all the time, why don't you become a soldier in the army of God. You don't have to work 24 hours a day, but when the need is there, you know, you got to pray for people. You got to get other people praying for people because prayer does change things. Like I said, I was sitting here in the beginning and I got to take a break and I was looking at some of the messages that were coming in to me because the messages that come in sometimes are from people that are not even here anymore. And it only takes a phone call and fellowship to say to someone, like Ernie said today, uh, can I pray for you? 
And it's just that act of love that you're concerned about someone else's situation that can bring a miracle into somebody's life. Who's the miracle? Jesus Christ. The word of God tells us here, I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priest with what? Salvation. Well, it's not just getting saved. There's full salvation. Study Sozo. Sozo is the word that teaches us that there's more than just saying the sinner's prayer once you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sorry, I got to let my sister back in. See, because I, I, I'm just sitting here preaching around these scriptures. I will also clothe her priest with salvation and her saints. That's you and I. You got pastors, you got elders. You got that word deacons. They've translated it today, modern time into deaconess because men and women serve the Lord. There's neither male nor female in Christ. It's like I said, I, I was reading a book that was written by a woman. People that come over to the church, I hand them that Mary Garrison book. And I have a few of them I hand out to people. It's like I told a brother. I said, the storehouse has to supply the needs spiritually of the saints. And that comes through testimony. That comes from a royal priesthood. That comes from brothers and sisters that are giving God the glory in their lives. You know, and I had 16 highlighted. And there will I make 17, the horn of David to bud. And here we are, the horn of David. David's been gone a long time. Jesus came and went. And yet the believer, the believer is the ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. Wow. Wow. And, and, and it says here, I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. And those that are ordained, they walk by faith, not by sight. They begin to trust God with their whole heart. They understand the, the unconditional love that God had for his creation. So what do you do with something like that? You have to learn to walk in it and pass the ammunition. So then what measure you measure, that spiritual measure will come back. The blessings of God open up in people's lives. They get up every day and say, okay, Lord, what are we doing? Thank you. Thank you that I'm breathing today. I was going up and down the stairs today. I went to bed and I was crying out to God for the pain in my legs. Today, I got no pain in my legs must be something to prayer because it works my wife prayed with me the other day it works so if you're going to love somebody even love the unsaved pray for them you'll see god supernaturally change people's hearts the last verse in this thing it says his enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. I'm going to keep it simple because I, I'm already at 9.32. I'm looking at the board and I had to let a couple of people in. I went to my short commentary because I had a lot on my heart when I read this this morning. And there's so many different examples in scripture that you can go to. And you can go to the Old Testament. You can go to the New Testament. Let me just share what my commentary said. Some students believe that this psalm was written 
when the Jewish exiles returned to their land and from Babylon. This theory explains why David is mentioned. It was a difficult time as the Jews tried to rebuild their temple, their city, and their nation. And their beloved King David had been involved in these different endeavors. The returned exiles wanted God to remember his covenant with David and restore their land. First of all, the temple, the first nine verses. I love the way things get broken down sometimes because it gives us a little common sense that there's not only our thoughts and our hearts involved in God's word, but there's always a spiritual teaching. And when I was reading this this morning, and I read out of the Thomas Nelson, I read out of the George Williams, that's where I got some of my own thoughts mingled in as I was reading and talking to everybody today, you know, because it comes from a multitude of counselors. But the Lord chose his son Solomon instead. However, David provided the plans for the temple. You go back to 1 Chronicles, chapter 28, and you read 11 to 19. Once again, I'll say it, because it, it, it shows you how we got such truth in the Word of God if we would open it up and study the Bible. 1 Chronicles 28, verses 11 to 19. And I'm sure myself or Steve or Pastor Mike or Pastor Moley, you can do a sermon on those verses along with some of the other stuff I'm going to talk about here. That's how when I study, if I want to bring forth a message to the brothers and sisters, I always sit there, like I said yesterday, I'll, I'll laminate some of these key scriptures to give me something to approach on when I'm in front of people talking to people. I'm not a know-it-all. I have to study and then there's a, a part of me that I believe in the Lord. I believe in the Gospels. I believe that no matter where you are, in what situation, if you're in the Word of God every day, God's going to give you utterance. That's why so many people come back to me and they can't believe some of the things I say when I preach because they study prior to it and they come to that same result in discussion or by the, the, the glory of God. The Holy Ghost. You know, when Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you, it's because he seals us with the Spirit of God. Yeah, you might you might trip, fall, go back to your vomit. Then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, yeah, chokes you down a little with the Word of God, brings godly sorrow. You get up and begin to walk again. That's mercy, people. And, and, and David, even though he didn't build it, Solomon did, it was David that provided the money. It was already in the storehouse, so to speak, as they conquered nations and did what God brought favor upon them. You know, God was always involved in the battles, people. That's why I, when, when Dave was praying and praying for Biden, you know, Biden's just, he's not saved. Neither was Barack Obama. We prayed for Barack for 18, eight years, people. And the world didn't end yet. And it's not going to end right now. Because there's a group of us that believe that maybe God's going to do a revival. There's some people in, in the deliverance camps that think it's all over and everything else. Nothing's over unless the Father says it's over. Even Jesus doesn't know that. Read your Bibles. Otherwise, why would we gather? Why would we pray every day? Why would Pastor Worley put out there in an interrogating tape that the enemy tried to take out of the book room a long time ago? I know. I witnessed it. Okay? The enemy was upset because of the fervent prayer of the believers. The people were praying daily to God in Jesus' name for God to 
supernaturally intervene. Go back and read the Old Testament. How many times God intervened when Israel was surrounded? How did the Israelites get across the river? God pottered the water. They didn't figure a way with pumps to make a clear path. It was done in the supernatural. Last week when I was doing deliverance, it was strictly the Holy Spirit, God, and the supernatural was being removed from a dear person that was didn't even have a clue. She answered every question right. She knew she was a child of God, but yet within her, there was something that was tormenting. God promises that David's line would continue. Go over to 2 Samuel chapter 7. Read the whole chapter. That's why all scriptures for teaching and correcting all of us, including Charlie. Because when I study the commentaries and people give locations, then part of your study is taking your Bible, sit down, Ask God to teach you something, and he will reveal to your heart what he's trying to teach you. First of all, how, how can you read and hear, God rewards those who diligently seek me? I know, we're all too busy to stop what we're doing every day to seek God. God says, if you want wisdom, ask me for it. How many people bring God into their decision-making. I don't do nothing without him anymore. I made too many mistakes. I don't even answer my phone without saying, Lord, do you want me to answer this call this moment? Everybody's busy. You know? Sometimes we got to ask God to spiritually clean us up, that we get out of our will, and we honestly, you know, I started saying that prayer a lot lately, you know, our Father who art in heaven. Jesus' prayer in, 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 in chapter 17, where he was praying for what we're going through today. So prayer is important. And commanding spirits out of people is important, too. Or God wouldn't have did it in the Bible. And, you know, a lot of churches today thought that stopped a long, long time ago. And I beg to differ. Just go to any one of the churches. And I'm not just saying call out or agape because Mike Smith's doing it. Chris LaSala's doing it. Uh, Steve Bell's doing it. You, you know what? Pastor World used to say, God will even use a person with a crooked stick. You don't have to be perfect. You got to be seeking. You got to be paying attention to the word of God and understanding that you're saved by grace. You, you, read, you go into Romans and you read that book real close. You'll realize how much God truly does love each and every one of us because we don't deserve what he's done for us. Go back to the throne here. Listen to what it says. God promised that David's line would continue on the throne. But now Israel was without a king. In fact, there would be no king until Jesus came. Now, those that were with me in the very beginning today, now... Now maybe you can go back to what the music I was playing. There's only one. Jesus. You know I me. Mean? I said that to a brother the other day. You know how many brothers and sisters couldn't read? But over the last 1900 years prior to technology and everything else today, you got no excuse today. If you got a smartphone and you can't read, the smartphone will speak the whole Bible to you. Take the time to listen. Ask God to show you the little pearls, the pertinent things. You don't have to be in a rush. If you want to know God, 
he'll give you plenty of time to get to know him. We just do this stuff here so I can preach and encourage people to read their Bibles, to put the word of God in their own lives into action. A seasoned believer sometimes has to hear because he's got so many other things going on or she's got so many other things going on that the world's got their ear and the things of the world. You really read your Bibles, you'll start giving God a little more time and your turbulence will start to slow down a little because God's the one that's in control. I got to get out of this because I'm really, I'm turning into what I don't want to do here is preach. And they would, here's what happened. In fact, there would be no king until Jesus came. Now, every one of us knows the story. Isaiah put it right there clearly in the Old Testament. He came to his own and they rejected him. If you don't understand that, I, I'm a, I was a Gentile. I didn't know God. I didn't read the Bible. I was bad to the bone, loaded with sin. That's all I ever knew. I was in sin, around sin, and serving sin. What is sin? It's anything that's opposite, anti, to Christ. That's why maybe when you really get into the word of God, or as I've seen some people that they read this warfare prayer, quite a few people over the years start crying when they're reading the prayer because it's, it's describing us what we were before Jesus came in. Some people were worshiping Satan. Some people had many idols. Some people were homosexuals, adulterers, fornicators, liars. And the, the law is the schoolmaster. It brings us to why we need a savior. And one day, Jesus came into, I don't know about you, but he came into my life. I didn't change immediately. I began to change because of his grace and mercy. Someone put a Bible in my, my hands and said, read it. There's no excuse for anybody. Skip one meal, buy a Bible, and have it ready in your car to give to someone else. You know what it is? People want other people to do everything for them instead of being that man or woman of God. One day he will return and restore David's throne. We're talking about Jesus. Luke chapter one, verses 30 to 33. And then to show you, you gotta go beyond the gospel my commentary says, go to Acts chapter 15, verses 14 to 18. So if we, you know, like I, I told Dave the other day, if we really, even myself, I, I preach it. But this is stuff that you need to put into a sermon and get up there in front of people and bring that Holy Spirit conviction down from the throne of grace into their hearts. Otherwise, people that hear the word of God, how are they going to get to that place of godly sorrow? Only God can do that in a person's heart. Sometimes you have to pray for a couple of years for people that are stubborn and rebellious. Going back to the finish line here. Jerusalem was in ruins, but it was the city of David and it would not be forgotten by the Lord. That's why he's married to the backsliders people. Other, there wouldn't be any grace for all of us that fall short of the glory of God. He would dwell there. And that's in the secret place. That's in our hearts. 
Because we now, today, in the New Testament, as New Testament believers, we bless the people and give them joy. And God, who would restore the power, that little horn that I spoke about in the scripture today, and light the lamp. How many times do you go back and read the five virgins? You get into this, this book and there's so many different illustrations. Even Jesus himself, he said to his disciples, when I return, do you think I'm going to find faith on the earth? Well, the faith is dwindling right now. It's up to those that believe to pass the ammunition right now. The harvest is plentiful. It's never been so plentiful, even in the United States. You know, I said to my brother Dave yesterday, I was talking to him, we were talking about uh, John Wesley. I didn't know until recently in my studies that the whole time he was doing the Wesleyan thing here in the United States, he wasn't really truly saved. And God still used the crooked stick, didn't he? And he went back to England and he had a heart to heart meeting with God. I only found that out recently. And, and you know, I wonder why. I wonder why these denominations are a little upside down right now. Because the true cornerstone wasn't the fact of the rock, Jesus Christ, the word of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, to get up and lay your lives down for what you believe in. When the going gets tough, remember, remember the story here with these feeble Jews who sacrificed to restore what sin had destroyed. That's why I've been on a, a tarrant about I can do all things through Christ. He's my Savior. They prepared the way for the Son of God who came to their city and temple. And what did Jesus do? Remember when I started to talk earlier? I said that last verse. And so the, the whole psalm sums up with that Jesus gave his life, not just for the sins of you and I, but to the whole, for the whole world. Because the whole world, jointly together, we don't even know the whole world. We don't even know all the brothers and sisters through the last 2,000 years that the Lord had saved. And then when you get to the book of Revelation and you see it, there's going to be a multitude that no eyes, no man, no woman can count. Well, it's not because they were walking in the word of God perfectly. They were believing in the one that God sent, his only begotten son. And that's why when I played that song, I, I don't play that song that much. I've probably played it no, no more than a half a dozen times over the years in this prayer group. I used to get, we used to get on our knees and worship God and sing songs. But God spoke to my heart years ago, just like when Diego came up to me in the church the other day. And, you know, as soon as this COVID stuff stops now a little bit, we're going to open up. Instead of doing an all-night prayer, we're going to go till midnight. So that people can come not only pray and worship, but get deliverance too. Because it's the enemy within us that stops us from the divine appointments. And once you understand the word of God, you understand that deliverance is for God's people. Even the ones he's calling. And if you're going to measure love, it's got to be unconditional. Because it's, it's the love that conquers the enemy, people. 
It's not that you know every word in the book, you know the Greek, the Hebrew, because there's multiple, multiple people in China, India, Africa, that are getting saved and all they're doing is believing in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not perfectly translated, but there is a name above all names. There is Jesus of Nazareth. There's that scripture that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. And that's what I tell people every day in my life right now. I ask them to profess God. If you don't know him, ask him to come, come in to you. Call upon him. Ask him to save you. You know? You can look at a person and say, you're a good person. That's not good enough. I love you. I, I want to know you for eternity. But you got to do something. You got to believe in the one that God sent. You got to be bold enough to talk to people about that. Okay, they don't jump up and down. They don't come to church every day or every week or twice a week. But they cried out to God. And God's a spirit. He's the creator. Jesus said, no one the Father gives me will come out of my hand. What do you think that's all about? It's spiritual. And sometimes our pride. I was, I was talking, I got to go into that book and reread a little that my wife handed me, that Pastor Mike handle, handed me a long time ago. What's my excuse? You know, you want to you wanna pray for Pastor Charlie? Pray that I get some of these things done so that I can teach a little about what God is showing me. Because if God gets the glory, even... When I, I read that message to you guys before, I posted back to the individual, PTL, praise the Lord. You know how many Christians I've sent that to, praise the Lord, PTL, and they write me back? What does that mean? And you know what I wrote after that? To God be the glory. And it's not a rote prayer that's going to get Get it's your heart. Your heart's got a desire to get up every day and be a child of the king. That works when you pray. Ask God to have the Holy Spirit give utterance. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for. You know, sometimes it's it's just the living water that flows out of our belly that. God will give you a little reminder that, yeah, you forgot to pray for this person. Or you hear someone else praying for someone, and then the light bulb goes on in your heart and in your mind, and you start to utter what you said you were going to do, but you forgot to do it. It's never too late. Just like it's never too late to say, Father, forgive me. To apply 1 John 1, 9 in our lives. You know, but anyway, that's my little role. Anybody else want to add to it? That's uh, Psalm 132. I'm going to click my button here because.